All right, guys, quick introduction and disclaimer. So you're going to be able to use this video uh, to teach you how to soft mod your Xbox, install Xbox Media Center, update Xbox Media Center, and uh, install a larger hard drive. While there are several different ways that you can soft mod your Xbox, I believe the way that I'm going to show you is one of the easier ways that requires the least amount of tools. We're going to go real slow, step by step in this video, just to ensure that no one gets lost. However, there are going to be a few steps that I'm not going to fully explain. However, I'll give as much info as possible in the info section underneath the video that you should be able to use that and figure out those other steps. This goes without saying, anytime you decide to modify your console, you are ultimately responsible for anything that happens. Also, I want to thank everyone for watching all my other Xbox uh, software videos, but this will most likely be my last Xbox related video. So, without further ado, with all the business stuff done, let's get started. Alright, first we're going to look at the parts you need. Of course, you need an original Xbox, power cord, AV cord, an Ethernet cable or internet cord, the original splinter cell, an Xbox memory card, a controller, some blank discs, a Torx screwdriver set, an old school computer, and the older IDE PATA hard drive, if you plan on installing a bigger hard drive. So first things first, you need to plug in the power cord. Plug in the Ethernet cord on the left hand side, make sure you click it in. Last but not least, the AV cord in the center. Just pop this big boy down, something sturdy. Don't forget to turn it on. November 15th, 2001, why not? Just go down to settings. Here you can adjust the clock, language, audio, video, whatever you want to do. But the only thing we really need to do here is go down to the auto off and make sure that it's disabled. Because this would cause some problems later when you're FTPing some memory into your Xbox. So next you're going to have to go to your memory section and unfortunately you're going to have to de delete all of your saved games to make space for some things you're going to do later. Unfortunately you are going to have to delete your Avril Lavigne, Lib Biscuit, and Linkin Park albums. Now that you got that done, you're going to plug in your memory card into the controller that is already preloaded with the SoftMod Installer Deluxe along with the Splinter Cell Linux files. Uh, you, you should be able to find these files easily if you just type in SID and Splinter Cell Linux files on Google. Now the, the next question you're going to ask is, well how do I transfer these files from my computer to the memory card? There are two ways to do this. One, if your friend already has a modded, soft modded Xbox, you can take these files from them, from your friend, and just transfer to the memory card. Or, you'll need what's called an action replay kit, which is basically some program and a cord that allows you to transfer files from your computer to a memory card. Now after you've copied these files, I click on the Xbox just to make sure you transfer them to your Xbox and that's all you should have in your memory. Now that that's done, you can remove the memory card because we're finished with it. Here I'm showing you the Splinter Cell game. You notice that it is not a Platinum Edition and it was also $1.99 at GameStop. Unfortunately GameStop doesn't sell original Xbox games anymore but you should be able to find it anywhere else. Just the key is making sure that it is not the Platinum Hits or Greatest Hits Edition. So next you're just going to put the game in and load it up like you're going to play it as normal. We're going to go to start game. I'm going to zoom in to make sure that everyone sees these steps, make it really easy for you. And you should only have one uh, saved game and that's it's going to be called Linux. And you'll see checkpoints, just click A. And this is where it's going to switch over to the soft mod section. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the backup restore features section. First thing, create EEPROM backup. The EEPROM is a file that's particular to each individual Xbox and it's going to come into handy later. It's always a good idea to back this up anytime you're going to soft mod an Xbox. So just click backup, it's going to show you a little happy face. Now just toggle down to go to back to main menu. Now we're going to be backing up the Microsoft Dash. So again, just go to backup. Now go down to create MS backup. You see it's right there under EEPROM backup. It's going to give you a little warning. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, you want to continue. 
This takes a little while, so I'm gonna just kind of fast forward through it. Now it's finished, so hit OK. Now hit B to back up to the main menu. And you're gonna go down to install single boot soft mod. And you're just gonna go to standard, whether or not you plan on installing a bigger hard drive. And I recommend going to Unleash X because it's easy to deal with. And it's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna do this? Hit yes. And it's gonna check to see that you made backups. And if you did, you won't have a problem. So now it's gonna start going again. I'm gonna fast forward that. So it's telling you, do you wanna shut down because it's finished? You say yes. And now when you go to boot your Xbox backup, hit the top bigger button, the eject button, so you can take the Splinter Cell disc out because you no longer need it. Now when you take a look at your Xbox, you'll see your new soft modded section, but we're not done yet. So go down to System, go to Boot Soft Mod Menu. It's going to take us back to where we were. Now if you just plan on installing XBMC on your factory hard drive, uh, you don't need to pay attention to any of this stuff, and we'll get back to you in a little bit. But this is for the people that are going to be installing the larger hard drives. So the first thing you're going to do is go back to the EEPROM backup section, and just back up your EEPROM one more time. And now we're going to move the EEPROM to the E drive. So just go to that, hit yes. And now back to main menu. Now you're going to be scrolling down to the section that says settings. Click on that, then go into network. We're having to open up the network so that you can access your Xbox files via your computer. So go down to type where it says static and just hit A on it to change it to, change it to DHCP. And you just need to go back to the main menu, say yes, you want to save these changes. And now go down the screen and go to restart network. If you notice in the top right where it says your IP, you'll see it as defaulted to zero. And now it's going to change and give you a new IP address and uh, just zoom it in so you can see where that IP address is on the screen. Now we're going to go to your computer. You're going to take the Xbox HDM 1.9 that you have downloaded and you're going to unzip that and just move that folder, the Xbox HDM folder, onto your desktop somewhere. And now I've opened the Xbox HDM folder and opened the Linux folder inside. There's going to be a C and an E folder. Go ahead and delete those because we're going to be replacing those later. And see there's a folder here called EEPROM and this is where you're going to take that EEPROM you backed up on your Xbox and you're going to drop it in this folder. And the whole purpose of this is you're going to create a disk image of your factory hard drive to copy this over to your brand new hard drive. So you're going to open FileZilla which is an FTP program and you're going to put the IP address that you saw on the screen in the first uh, block and then Xbox as the username and Xbox as the password. Um, this allows you to see the file architecture or setup of the Xbox and now we're going to take the C and E drives from the Xbox you can see that on the right within FileZilla just go ahead and highlight them both and you're going to drag and drop that into the um, Xbox HDM folder on your hard drive to replace those C and E folders that you deleted and here I'm just showing you the files transferring over you can see it takes a little while um, you got a few hundred megabytes to transfer Now that that's done, we're going to transfer that EEPROM. So open that back up and go into the EEPROM folder, have that folder open. Now you're going to click on the E drive in FileZilla, go into your Xbox, go into the backup section, and go to the EEPROM section, and you'll see there's an, a file called EEPROM.bin, B-I-N. That's the only file you need. You'll just drag and drop that EEPROM.bin into the EEPROM folder um, on your Xbox HDM folder on your desktop. And at the back you see as long as you did these three things as long as you have the C drive from your Xbox the E drive from your Xbox and that specific EEPROM.bin these are all the files you need to create your uh, ISO of your Xbox original hard drive so now we're going to go uh, hit back one folder and you're going to click on this file right here which is going to create an ISO for you it's going to show this little black screen it's going to show a bunch of numbers you don't need to do anything and you're going to see it has made you a Linux ISO. And this is what you're going to need to burn. So then just put a blank CDR into your computer 
and using the program called DVD Decryptor. That's what I recommend using. It's very simple and it works easy with um, doing these Xbox ISOs. You're going to select the file that you're going to use, which is that Linux ISO that you created. See, there it is. And I would recommend turning the burning speed down low. And I, I commonly use 4x. And this is a process that takes a little while um, because of the low burning speed. See, it's getting started right here. I'm not going to make you sit through it. So now we're finished. We burned that uh, CD, and now we've got our new hard drive that we're going to install. I'm just showing you that it's uh, the older IDE, which is a you know bigger hard drive. I'm going to plug it into my old computer. First, I'm plugging in the uh, ribbon cord for the data, and then here is the separate cord that just has the power. It supplies it to the hard drive. Make sure you've taken out any other hard drives in your old computer. At this point, you can boot your old computer, open the disk drive, put in the disk that you burned that is an image of your factory Xbox hard drive. Now your computer is going to boot up, and it should boot to that disk. If not, just start your computer over and restart it with the disk already in it. Now it'll boot to the disk, and if, as long as you burned it correctly, this is what it's going to say. And we're going to type in number one on the keyboard and hit enter to go to option one. And this next thing may not happen to you, it's just telling me that this program is uh, its not compatible with the resolution of my monitor, so it's letting you choose the different resolutions. And I just choose option 6 because it's the highest resolution. And so this part here, um, this may be a little bit different for you based on your computer, but mine usually sits right here for about 2-3 to three minutes and doesn't move. And I just have to sit and let it finish. Yours may be a little faster depending on what older computer you use. But once that's over, you're going to come to this menu. And you're just going to have to type in Xbox HD and hit enter. You're going to have to say yes right here. Hit enter. Now we're going to go to number one option, build a new Xbox HD from scratch. Just hit one and hit enter. Basically you're just going to have to answer a bunch of prompts here. Just saying are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to say yes. Now it's checking the files on the disk says that we've noticed that the hard drive you have installed is larger than the 8 gigabyte hard drive that's normally in the Xbox. Do you want to create a partition for that larger space? You say yes, hit enter. And just say yes again. And then hit enter. Now it's going to say do you want to copy the files uh, from the C drive partition that you have on the disk? Say yes. This takes a little while so we're going to fast forward through that. Now, same thing, uh, but for the files on the E drive. Again, say yes, hit enter. And this also takes a little while. You'll hear a lot of noise coming from your uh, new hard drive. And once this is done, it's going to come back to this menu. And what you do right here is go over to your computer, hold that big power button down so your whole computer powers down. And then just power it right back up. This is going to be the last step on this old computer. And this is going to be. Uh, you're going to be locking the hard drive because the hard drive has to be locked for the factory Xbox, or for the soft, excuse me, the soft modded Xbox to be able to read from it. So it's going to boot back up to the same menu that it did before. But this time, instead of option one, we're going to choose option three, which is the boot Linux with locking slash unlocking utilities. And again, I'm prompted with the uh, resolution error, so I'm just going to hit the highest resolution, which is option six, and hit enter. This time uh, it looks a little bit different. You see the little Linux penguin at the top. And this, for some reason, on my this step does not take that long as it, as it does on the first step. So right here, you're going to lock the hard drive. You're going to type in lock HD dash A. And then hit enter. Actually, I made an error. Excuse me, it's lock. HD space dash A. So you can see I made a mistake, but it didn't, nothing bad happened because of it. It just said it didn't understand. So lock HD space dash A, then hit enter. And instead of typing in the word yes here, you're just going to hit the letter Y. It's going to say, Are you sure you want to lock this with this E prom? You say yes, hit enter. And now it's done. And so this next part, uh, I guess maybe I'm just a little superstitious. But I like to power down the computer. I'm going to take you over there just to show you that. Before unplugging the uh, hard drive. 
So I'm just gonna hold that front button down for a little while to make sure it powers down. Walk on over to the back. I'm also gonna unplug the power supply to the computer just to make sure there's no static stuff going on when I pull it out. So I pulled that out, now I'm just gonna unplug the hard drive, shouldn't have any problems from here on out. You're gonna unplug the uh, little power cord for it and also the large information ribbon. Now you're gonna just flip over the Xbox that you were, uh, you're gonna mod. And you're gonna be peeling back these small little rubber tabs and peel them from the outside. And this is so that you don't have to pull the whole thing off because once you pull the whole thing off, it's hard to get them to stay on. If you just peel back the edge, it'll, they'll stay on, no problem. So you've got four corners. And right here, you're using a Torx, T-O-R-X, size 20 for these screws. We're gonna have a total of six of these screws on the bottom of the Xbox. I'm gonna speed up the video here um, just for the four corners. Again, just peel back the edge. That makes things a lot easier later. You won't have to be searching for your Xbox little rubber feet later. Now there are two extra screws and they are hidden behind two of the stickers. What you do is just rub right there and you'll create a little depression. You'll see where it is. And I hold my thumb on the edge of the sticker when I pierce through with the uh, screwdriver so that I don't rip the sticker when the screw pulls through. And it's just gonna leave you a, a small little hole. And the same over here, just rub. And now just hold the edge of the sticker with your finger as you pull the screw through it. And once it pops through, then you don't need to hold it with your finger because then the sticker is going to stay still. Now just flip your Xbox over and just holding the top, you're just going to shake a little bit and this whole top is just going to come right off. And it's really easy. Now we're going to zoom in and we're going to move that ribbon plugged into the factory hard drive and there's going to be a screw underneath. Right here you're going to use your Torx 10, which is the smallest that you'll have out of the three. I'm just going to unscrew that. And now we're going to have to unplug the hard drive. It's got the same two cables in it. It's got the ribbon cable for the data and the small one for the power. I like to use the Torx 10 right here just to help move those prongs back a little bit. This makes it easier because there's not a lot of room for your fingers to get and pull that power out. It just makes it a little bit easier. So you're just going to pop that straight back. And this ribbon is a little bit easier because you just have more to pull. And now you're just going to have to pull this wire back. I'm going to zoom out just to make it a little easier to see. And you're just going to take out this whole tray which houses the uh, hard drive only. It makes it a little bit easier if you pop out that wire on the side pop it out the side of the tray that holds the hard drive. Now you've got the tray out that holds your hard drive. Now you're going to be using the Torx 15 head to take out these screws. There's just four screws that hold the hard drive in. I'm just going to take them out one by one. Speed up the rest of this. You can use these same screws to put your um, new hard drive in. Once you've taken this out, you can go ahead and reverse this process with your new hard drive. Go ahead and put it in here, put the four screws in, put the tray back down, plug in the power cord and the ribbon, and you can go ahead and put that uh, middle screw in, that Torx 15, or excuse me, Torx 10, and then you can go ahead and put the case back on. So this part of the video, I wanted to show you the, to, to install Xbox Media Center, we're going to have to use these AID, which is Auto Installer Deluxe with Xbox Media Center. I want to show you that picture because um, I've burned it onto several different types of media, CD-R, CD rewritables, DVD-Rs, DVD, DVD rewritables, because different Xboxes can read different uh, types of media. So what you're going to do is put that AID disc in there, and you look at the top right of the screen, it's going to tell you that the tray is opening, closing, and it's going to check it. And if it reads it, it'll, say, it'll call it a game. And if it calls it a game, then just click A on launch, so it's going to open up. Auto Installer Deluxe with XBMC. This is how we're going to move XBMC onto the Xbox. And this is uh, where you guys need to start paying attention again if you just wanted to put XBMC on your Xbox without the bigger hard drive because this step is the same now. You're going to go down to the Dashboard section and go to Install E Drive Dashboards. And you're going to go down to XBMC. 
And again, this is where everyone needs to start paying attention whether or not you've put in the bigger hard drive or not. For the people with the bigger hard drive, that had, I would say 320 to 500, you're going to choose this option, which is the E plus F. If you have the factory hard drive, you're just going to use that first option, which is just the E. If you're going bigger than 500, you're probably going to need to go down to E, F, and G. So this takes a little while, and we'll just fast forward through this. Okay, so it's finished. You just hit OK. I'm just going to hit B to back up through this, and you're going <clears> to <throat> excuse me, shut down the Xbox. And just like we did before, hit the eject button to turn on your Xbox and pull out the AID disc because you're not going to need it anymore. We're going to have some uh, more details on AID down in the info section. So now when you boot your Xbox up, you should have XBMC as your factory dash. But if you go over to the file manager, you're going to notice that that whopping 320 gigabyte hard drive you just installed, it says you only have 123 meg, uh, gigabytes showing. So we're going to need to partition the hard drive. So we're going to have to transfer a program called Xbox Partitioner over to your Xbox. So first we need to go into settings and the network, and again, you need to change the network settings to DHCP. This is going to allow you to access the hard drive with an FTP program, FileZilla. And I'd also recommend going into your settings and uh, changing the screensaver uh, just so that your TV screen, especially if you have a plasma, just so that it won't, you won't get any burn in because you'll be doing a lot of stuff that takes a little while to transfer. So I would just change it to, just put a screensaver that turns on within one minute so when you're on your computer, you're not hurting your screen. So you can see your IP address. You're going to use that same IP address in FileZilla. Username Xbox, password Xbox. You see the same stuff. You see a C, D, and E drive, and F drive. And we're going to be transferring some programs over to the E drive. You're going to see I'm transferring three folders here. One is called Apps. One is Saves. Those are just some of my own Xbox saves. And the new Xbox Media Center, I'm going to... I've titled the folder XBMC New. I would recommend you do that. And you can find new XBMC, uh, new versions of XBMC at uh, xbmc4xbox.org. I'll put that information down in the info. In the apps folder, you're going to be transferring, uh, I recommend doing three different programs. You're going to add three programs, DVD to Xbox, Dongle Free DVD, and Xbox Partitioner. Once you've added those, go to Programs. We're going to go to Add Source. This is going to show your Xbox where these files are and go to browse go to e drive and you'll see the folder apps that you added go to OK then go down to OK now you have an apps folder in your programs folder go to apps then go to Xbox partitioner click A and this is set up real simple that if you just click A a couple times it'll give you the highest hard drive space which for this particular hard drive is 290. Once you get that hard drive you want click start and then it see right here it says click Y to continue hit the Y button and at the bottom of the screen you can see it's currently partitioning the hard drive and now it is finished and all you have to do is click the back button on the controller and you'll now have all that space available for you. Reboot here and go check our space to make sure we have all the gigabytes available. Let's go over to File Manager. You see now we have 297 gigabytes. So that's what we need an Xbox Partitioner for. And now we need to uh, update XBMC with that newly downloaded XBMC that we uh, entitled XBMC New. So what you're going to do is go back into Programs, go back into Apps, and you're going to boot up DVD to Xbox. And this is a program you use to copy DVD, uh, Xbox games or DVDs to your hard drive. But we're going to use this so that we can replace XBMC um, while we're not running XBMC because you can't replace it while you're running it. So you're going to go into settings, you're going to go to enable network and hit 
A, and for some reason that option usually takes a little while, and also go down to enable FTP server by hitting A. Once you've done that, hit the back button. And now your IP address will be at the bottom. And now we'll go back to your computer, open up FileZilla, again put your IP address in, username Xbox, password Xbox. And we're going to go into the E folder where you put that uh, brand new version of XBMC. So you're going to right click on the just plain XBMC and I would just add the word old to it so it says XBMC old so you know which one is old and which one is new. Now rename the new one just XBMC. Be very careful that there is no space after the C in XBMC. And When you finish just making it XBMC hit the enter key on your keyboard. Now on your Xbox you're just going to go to exit to dash and once you do this it's going to restart into your new XBMC. You basically have to trick it by renaming the folder. And uh, you see some stuff in here. These are some game files I had already uploaded. But if you can't tell at home, the video clarity is not looking so great. And that's because it's running right now at 480. So I need to go to System, Video Output, Enable 720p, and Enable Widescreen. Then right click, or use the right stick and click it, and go to Restart XBMC. And once it boots back up, it's going to boot back into 720p widescreen version. And I'll just zoom in here so you can see how the clarity is enhanced by running things in 720p. Again, these are some games that I had added, added earlier. As you can see, the clarity is greatly enhanced. And now, we've got a brand new XBMC. This is running a skin called Confluence, which can be found at xbmc4xbox.org. Check your weather, listen to music, and whatever else. And so that's really it. Now you've got XBMC on your brand new um, softly modded Xbox with a big hard drive. So enjoy.